Hey everyone, the name is Rector and today I want to talk about overwhelm, being overwhelmed and dealing with overwhelm. And what is overwhelm? Well, overwhelm can give the idea that something is too much. We are experiencing, we are taking in more information than we can process or handle and deal with in a reasonable manner. So overwhelm can happen when we're feeling that our mind is too cluttered, there are too many thoughts, there are too many experiences, the sensations around us can feel too strong, there's too much happening, we lost control, we don't understand what's going on anymore. Overwhelm can entail uh, just feeling like you're full and you you don't know what to do or how to take in anything else or how to deal with anything else that is happening around you. Overwhelm can drive you to shut down and to become quiet and uncommunicative and closed or it can cause you to cause you to become rattled and to start blabbling uncontrollably or to start uh, showing concentration issues and reckless behavior. So overwhelm is a real thing, a real issue that we can all experience in certain situations. When I'm talking about overwhelm, I'm often talking about highly sensitive people. Highly sensitive people are people that experience overwhelm from sensory information, from being in a present environment where things are happening, where no noises are low, loud, when there are strong smells, strong sensations. People are touching you, people are talking to you, people are engaging you, people are being on, full on. There, there's music blasting around you, there's people dancing, people shouting, screaming, there are cars driving around everywhere, there's people everywhere, there's big crowds, loud gatherings. Yeah, the highly sensitive person is the person that experiences overwhelm from sensory environments. But you'd be surprised to find out that people can experience overwhelm from different things. For example, I never felt I could think too much. People have told me I do, but I've never felt I could think too much. I've never felt that my head could be too full. I've always felt that there was room for another thought or another question. I'm a questioner. I, answer, I question everything. I'm always thinking about things. I can think about things for hours at end without interruption. And uh, that's why I do YouTube. My head is so full of thoughts that I just have to get them out somehow. And uh, I just love to go and go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. So me, I never experienced overwhelm from thoughts or from the imaginative or from theories or from dreams. I can dream as much as I want, but I do experience overwhelm when I'm in a crowd. I get overwhelmed, my girlfriend notices how stressed and rattled I can become when in these situations. Suddenly a car drives past and I get jumpy and nervous and antsy. I can struggle when there's loud music. I struggle to hear what other people are saying in part because I don't have 100% hearing, but also because it's hard to process everything that's going on and I become drained very, very easily in these situations. When I, things are happening, and when decisions need to be made, overwhelm can be a bitch. You know, when you're sitting in a situation and people are pushing you to do things and to say things and to be on and engaging and there's music, you're expected to be loud as well. You're expected to talk fast and to be engaged and to be on and upbeat. But what I do, what happens to me is I start feeling tired. And people look at me and they go, why is he tired? Why is he yawning in this situation? Like the party has just started. Why, why are you yawning? Why are you tired in these situations? And for me, it's like, yeah, it's just how I am. <laughs> it's just how I'm wired. It's just my nervous system. Yeah, Elaine Aaron believed that the key to highly sensitive people was found in how their nerves process information and sensations, how we process pain and experiences, how we feel with our bodies, how we see things, how we hear things, how we process things. So she connected it to our intake of information and she connected it to the information that was sensory in its nature. So to get this, information can be sensory or it can be intuitive. Carl Jung believed that Information could be either sensory or intuitive. What this means is information can be com can come from the imagination. And, you know, the imagination, that's the source uh, that we get all our ideas from. The imagination is what makes us uh, imagine the world to look differently than what it is. It's what gets us to see patterns and to make connections. According to the imagination, things are existential in their nature. There is concepts, there are 
theories, there is abstraction, there is philosophy, there is questions. Why am I here? What do I like to do? Who am I? What got me here? Why are we here? What's the nature of being here? What's the nature of where we are? What is the... the how do things work? How, how, how are things actually? What is the actual nature of things? So... The introverted intuitive type is the most closely connected to highly sensitive and being highly sensitive. And often these types tend to score high on these questions. Let's go through the self-test. The self-test says, I'm easily overwhelmed by strong sensory input. Check. I seem to be aware of subtleties in my environment. Check. Other people's moods affect me. Check. I tend to be very sensitive to pain. Check. I find myself needing to withdraw during busy days into bed or into a dark room or any place where I can have some privacy and relief from stimulation. Check. I go to bathrooms. I turn off all the lights. I sit down and by myself and I just hold my hands like this sometimes and it's just me detaching and detaching is an important part of being an introverted intuitive introverted intuitives do this all the time they distance themselves they detach they disconnect they go dark what happens is we process better our imagination feels it can stretch itself better and wider when things around us are less intense so the more intense things get, the harder it is to think and to practice and to daydream and to imagine things. You know, there are people out there that can imagine out loud. What can that mean? That can mean brainstorming. It can be throwing out ideas. Let's go there. Let's see that. What happens if we do this? It means experimenting. It means testing things out. It means having abstract discussions with other people about people, what events, things that are happening, possibilities. But the introvert and intuitive cannot think out loud, at least not easily, at least not as easily as others can. What that means is we have to do it internally. Often it starts out internally. We have to stop. People go, what's your thoughts? What are you thinking? Well, to know, first I have to stop. So one of the most important skills of the introverted and intuitive is learning to stop. And stop means slow down, sit still, calm yourself, relax. Turn off the sensory. Yes, imagine the sensory as a loud volume bar and start turning it off. Learn to detach, learn to disconnect. Tune out everything that's happening around you. It doesn't matter. The party doesn't matter. The people around you, they don't matter. Focus on yourself. Go inside. Learn to be able to hear your own voice. This is something I tell everyone, regardless of their personality type. Learn to hear your own voice. Learn to hear your own thoughts. Learn to recognize your own experiences. Think to yourself, I'm thinking about this. I'm experiencing this. I'm seeing this. I'm, this is happening. This is what I'm doing. Learn to tune into what you are at your highest frequency. So find out where your frequency is. Imagine we have a radio channel. We have different frequencies we can be on. Find your frequency. That's somewhere in the middle there. So it's not what everybody else tells you. It's not what's happening around you. It can be, but it's not necessarily going to be this way. So finding your personality type is also finding which frequency you work on and which frequency is your frequency. So it's also learning to say, this is not what I'm thinking. This is what somebody else told me. You know, It can be easy to be affected by other people's moods. Other people are upset and they're starting to yell and they're getting caught up in things. So we're inclined to yell too and to get upset as well. But uh, a guide to Zen is learning to think, am I upset? No, I'm not upset. So should I be upset? No, I should not be upset. Uh, and yeah, they are upset, but I'm not upset. That's their voice. That's not my voice. Another part of it is, yeah, everyone else is having fun in this situation. But should I have fun in this situation? Am I having fun in this situation? No, I'm not having fun in this situation. A key to overwhelm is often we do things we don't need to do. We put energy into things that don't give us energy. You know, energy is like resource. We can invest. We can invest things. We can invest our energy, put our energy into somebody or something, and we can get nothing back. And what happens gradually, we don't even notice it. The conversation seems to be fun and everything seems to be engaging and the other person seems to be enjoying themselves. So we think we should be. So we think we are energetic. We think we are happy. But then we leave and we feel all tired and drained and we're like, what happened? I feel deflated. I feel like I'm nothing. I feel like I don't have anything. And that's also a part of it. That's also a part of overwhelm. You know, feeling drained, feeling exhausted by something. Overwhelm tends to lead to feeling exhausted. So what tends to happen is we feel a need to retreat and we shut down and we fall asleep on the couch 
and uh, it's a total waste. We've used up our energy for no reason whatsoever. If we would have been able to have a more honest relationship with other people, it would have been easier. What that means is communicate to other people on a level that is comfortable for you. What that means is don't force yourself to be more on or more fun than what you need to be. What that means is talk with a voice and a tone that is comfortable for you. Talk about things that are interesting to you. And that is the key to sending energy and getting energy. What I learn is we don't have to come home from work every day and crash. We don't have to feel exhausted all the time. We don't have to feel overwhelmed all the time. We don't have to push ourselves all the time. We don't have to rush ourselves all the time. We don't have to make every decision on the spot. We don't have to think and say and mimic everything that's happening around us. We don't have to be attentive to everything everyone is saying and everything that's going on. We can have some people that we listen to and that we feel connected to and that's fine. We don't need to connect to everyone. We don't need to hear everything. We don't need to be everywhere. We need to get rid of the fear of missing out. We don't need to be everywhere. We need to be where we want to be. We need to be where we find what we, uh, in a place that we find important to us. So that means having intimate relationships with those that matter and that those that give you energy and those that you can have meaningful conversations with. Being in the party, sure, but finding a place in the kitchen to sit down with a few people that you find interesting and to have a good chat with these people and to learn something. It doesn't necessarily mean dancing for 10 hours if that's not what you like or that's not what's good for you. So... Overwhelm can be different for every type. You need to learn to recognize it in yourself and other people. You can realize that you can overwhelm other people too. You can overwhelm other people by your thoughts and by your theories, by what you're thinking about. And this can be difficult for other people. And this can be something uh, we need to learn to deal with and handle. Other peop- We need boundaries for ourselves and other people need boundaries for themselves. Not everybody has to listen to or understand you or what you think or what you sense or what you experience. Not everybody has to be a part of everything you do or to know everything you're thinking about or to experience everything that you're experiencing. Connection and friendship is an important part of being able to share and to have some things in common and being able to share secrets or being able to talk with one another and to have levels where you work together. But... uh, Not everybody has to be on that level and not everybody has to connect with you on that level. But if you have, for example, an extroverted sensing friend, somebody that can find it a bit rattling and a bit tiresome to hear about your thoughts and theories all the time, what you can learn to do is portion it. Yeah, there can be a good solid basis for friendship here because they can help you manage the sensory And you can help them manage the intuitive. You can work on these two levels, on these two different frequencies, and you got each other's back in it. That's what you want to do. You want to have each other's backs. You know, this is going to overwhelm him, so I'll take care of it. Oh, now a loud person is coming. I'm going to talk to this person, and I'm going to set the INFJ aside and focus on this, and the INFJ doesn't have to deal with this person. Oh, now it's a little too much for him. I'll give him a break for a little bit, or... The INFJ can take over and uh, they can go, okay, I can understand that it's a little um, too much right now. I'll think about this for you and help you find a solution to this or help you understand this a little bit better. I know it's a little bit complex. I know it's a bit bit crazy. Yeah, I'll think about it and get an answer for you later. So... Overwhelm is all about tuning down and finding a level of comfort, but it's not necessarily about tuning it down to zero. That's not necessarily it, you know. There is a value to sensory, there is a value to the intuitive. A lot of people advise intu- intuitives to go more into the sens- sensory. What that often means means becoming more concrete, uh, expressing what you feel, putting things out there, sharing for f- yourself, revealing yourself to other people, getting attention to yourself when you want it or when it's important you know imagine you've had a great idea imagine if you don't share it with anybody then it's never gonna change the world it's never gonna make a difference so let the intuitive guide you often what you want to do is you need to tap into yourself hear your own inner voice and then you need to put it out there that's the process of things that's the ideal way for things to go 
get an idea, get uh, what do I want, what do I care about, what matters to me, and then talk about it with other people and notice other people care about the same thing. Just get some report, get some response, get somebody to weigh in on what you're thinking about once you're ready for it. Get some response from what you're thinking about. Don't lose yourself in a hermit bubble or go into a cave. Don't uh, put on your loud sensory uh, earmuffs to close out everything around you. Don't uh, put on permanent blindfolds and uh, live in uh, uh, existential bliss for the rest of your life. But learn to manage the sensory in a healthy manner. What that means is... Uh, having close and deep connections and paying attention to loved ones, those that you care about, those that are important to you. And uh, that also means dealing with a job or a career if it's in line with your intuitive interests or if it's necessary for you to pay your bills and to get through the day or to deal with and help you get through other parts. And uh, learn to portion it appropriately. Where do I put my sensor? If I have this much energy, if I have that much I can put into this, Make sure I always get the return on what I do. Yeah, I can pay attention to you. Yeah, I can put myself into this situation. I can go into this environment. I can go to this party. But make sure you always get something in return for it. And that means getting a good conversation or intellectual discussion from it. That means uh, making a friend or getting a chance to experience something new or to broaden your horizons. A lot of introverted intuitives need to snap out of their dream bubble. And what that means is they get comfy in their own heads and they have their own home and their own place. But perhaps they want to be great writers. Perhaps they want to uh, learn something. Perhaps they want to understand something. And you can't just understand everything in theory. Not everything is going to happen in the books. You can't escape to books forever. So you need to go out and have experiences. You need to go out and have adventure. But make sure it adven it's adventure you're having. Make sure it's an adventure that will help you write your book. So uh, go to a place, if you're writing about uh, uh, lions and the fantasy, go to a place where there are lions and see lions, <laughs> you know. If you want to uh, write a book about love and relationships, go out and have relationships and go out and hear about people's experiences of love because that's the challenge, you know. The challenge I find myself in now is I built up this massive castle palace of theories at erictor.com and I built up this YouTube uh, empire of ideas and uh, now I'm like I have to get more practical I have to write a book I have to finish something and you know what that means is I have to finally start providing you with examples and I have to talk about real events and real experiences and let me be honest with you right now I'm feeling overwhelmed Right now I have no idea how to manage my life puzzle. Right now it's actually become very quite difficult for me. Perhaps you've seen it, my last videos, I haven't had the energy. And the reason has been because there is so much work. I'm trapped in this hamster wheel. It's uh, work, work, work every day. It's uh, things happening, it's things going on and it's not enough. It's not enough time to work and write and to do the things I love. So I feel like I'm caught in a wheel. I'm constantly trying to force to keep it spinning. I'm forced to, constantly forced to make more money and to work harder to provide my rent and to uh, provide all my living expenses. And then I have to deal with other things that keep on happening. You know, life keeps on happening no matter you want it or not. And sometimes it happens more than you want it to and sometimes it happens less than you want it to when it happens more than what you want it to it can be uh, it can be accidents it can be uh, issues coming up it can be unexpected bills it can be unexpected things you know those things come up all the time they come up and you know they force you to make a decision and to put they can put you in a corner at that point you just have to do something in that at that point you just have to get through it but when that happens, I try to remind myself to set a time frame on it. How long do I have to deal with this? When can I start getting back to it? And am I sure there's not time for a little break? Am I sure I can't take five, 15 minutes? Can I go out into the sun for a bit where nobody else is sitting? Can I sit down for a bit? Can I uh, find a space for myself somewhere? Do I have a... And a lot of highly sensitive people do this. They have this kind of... Uh, recharging point they have a their places in nature they go to to recharge they have places they go to they have a room that is completely their own the parents are not allowed to enter do not enter they put up loud big signs on the door this is my place this is where i listen to music this is where i sit down and think this is where i crash into bed and just look up at this roof you know that's an important part of being a healthy and thriving highly sensitive person 
And uh, yeah, you remember you also have a superpower, and the superpower is you process the imaginative, you, pro uh, you process the internal imaginative faster than anyone else and better than anyone else, and you can press process more of it than anyone else. When other people are getting full and tired and overwhelmed, all these theories, what do they mean? I don't understand what's going on. You're comfortable. You're good. You're fine. So you also have your superpower. You process some things better than others and you process some things worse than others. Some things you need more help with and some things you can help other people with. So you're not just limited. Highly sensitive B doesn't mean weak. It doesn't mean less. It just means different. So I hope this video can help you a little bit with uh, the overwhelm we can feel. And I hope uh, you can tune out of this uh, thinking, what can I do a little bit less? What can I do a little bit more? What can I do a little bit better? How can I manage things a little bit smarter? Because that's why I do YouTube. Everything I say I hope will translate to a better decision in your life, a better choice, a better prioritization, and more self-awareness. If you like it, feel free to visit patreon.com slash erikdor or erikdor.com and uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe if you like it. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.